This is insane, dude. Howdy. Welcome back to another episode. Today, I'm taking the newly renovated bug camper, two days camping, fishing, and hanging out on the North Shores of Minnesota. It's sure to be a fun trip. So this is my non-conventional Volkswagen Beetle that I actually picked up two years ago. I bought it from a man off Facebook Marketplace here in Minnesota, and it was unfinished when I bought it. I ended up adding some canvas and a roof to it so it was campable, but I was never super happy with how it would operate in the field. There was janky control arms that came up, and it either felt like the springs were going to take a finger off or the sharp metal edges were. Because the Volkswagen Beetle is a smaller car, the suspension was definitely feeling some hurt with the heavy wood that was used in the initial build. So along with the help from my good friend Drew, we decided that we needed to make a change. What is up, gang? Today we are taking a look at dear old Bugless. Here's where he's at to start. He's an awesome vehicle, but he's definitely in need of a little bit of love. The cabinetry here is made of this super thick three quarter inch tongue and groove board that's really heavy and not suitable for a VW bug camper. So we're gonna kind of try and lighten things up a little bit while adding some more beneficial systems. Get a roof fan in here. We're gonna redo this ceiling because we've got a little bit of sagging issue as you can see on some of this. So let's start by taking some stuff out of here. Probably halfway through pulling stuff out of this. Got a nice pile going here. And whoever built this, I, I'd go as far as to say they had some construction knowledge, um, but definitely not any sort of like van or RV building <laughs> experience. Um, lots of two by lumber in here and so many nails. Everything in here is held together by nails. So it's a lot of pulling and wrenching and ripping on stuff. One of the biggest issues with the bug was that it would get very hot in the summer and very cold in the winter. So we decided to add a new max fan in. Uh, this gives you the option to be able to push air in or blow air out, which is really nice for smells of cooking alongside of keeping the inside of the cabin warm or cold. Dude, we got the color spot. coordination down today. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's like we planned it. That's wild. We decided to go with all new cabinets for this build. The old cabinets were just really heavy and built out of like tongue and groove, really thick, like half inch plywood. And it added a lot of weight to the back. So because we were adding a lot of new wood structure in. got a heater installed now water tanks in place we're gonna install our water pump here soon right now we switch sides we're working over here so we got this little setup together nice little sliding door here it's a uh, tricky without the handle on it but nice little sliding door for a little cubby in here um, and right now we're working on a very tricky part which is uh right here so you got this nice curved angle um, so what I'm going to attempt to do is make a bunch of relief cuts in the back of a piece of quarter inch plywood, um, which will hopefully give it the bend it needs to kind of just bow right into place there and give us that nice rounded wood look. Alright, so today we're working on the ceiling panel for the roof. This is one of two panels that we've got cut out. Radical dude. Jeez. Would you like to cut it, sir? I can cut it, sir. I would be honored. Away. 
Let me throw up, I'll go grab us some foam. Alright, so this is one of our roof panels. We are going to be putting some foam on it to add some insulation, also some padding to where the uh, the tapestry is going on. So we're gonna spray glue that down and then we're gonna try to mount this thing to the roof. You wanna start at one end, I'll start at the other. Yes sir. I'm gonna spray. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so here's the tapestry we've got going. Cool pattern on it. We got it mounted to the foam. And now Drew's working on getting it taped along the bottom side so you just have a little easier time putting it in. Funny, I feel like this is like a one and a half person job, so there's yeah, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of standing around and looking, but I'm happy to be here for the process, man. Yeah. All right, so here it is. Our ceiling panel is entirely prepped. I am unbelievably in love with how this turned out. This is exactly my vision for a nice groovy, shagadelic vibe for the bug. So right now this is all just taped up under here. So you see it's just basically a clear duct tape underneath there until we get this inside. It's just meant to hold this in place while we get the panel up into the ceiling. Then from there it gets put in with a bunch of screws and upholstery caps. came up with a really cool idea for this top um, that we're gonna try to actualize starting today. So the trick of this bug is it has these old school lift jacks in here. You have to bend these by hand to get the top to go down. They really fight you when you're trying to get the top up. This thing is a death trap. So what we wanna do is automate the whole topper and get this guy to come up and down at the push of a button. So what we're gonna do is we got a couple of these bad boys here. This is a nice telescopic linear actuator. So these guys can handle big weight much more than we're gonna ask them to. Press a button and raise and lower this top part. Much more sturdy system and a lot cooler, let's be honest. All right, so a lot of progress on a lot of really small things recently. I've gotten at least some of it on some time lapse lately. But just to bring you up to speed, we're pretty much all wired up in here now. We've got all the wiring run. We're gonna have a switchboard that connects right into this empty space right here. Um, up here, we still have a lot of work to do, as you can see. We've got our ceiling in here as well. This is looking spectacular up here. Um, still gotta put some covers on all our little screws and things like that to make it look nice and pretty, but really coming together. The lumber for the countertop is here. Now this is an exceptional piece of walnut. So we're not doing too much to this. We're just gonna put a sink hole into this guy and then we need to have a hole back around here for our linear actuator to go. So we'll be getting a nice wet finish on this guy so it looks nice and glossy and really pops. But today we start shaping, so let's get into it. Got my corner cut out made. I'm really happy with my alignment there. On to the hard stuff, which is undermount sink cut out. Gotta be happy with that. All right, guys, so I finally have this cabinet to the point where I think we can put the cabinet top on and get our countertop in. And once this is in, we can start finishing it. But uh, while this is curing and drying today, we're gonna dive into making some cabinet doors. So let's get to it. With Drew's amazing handiwork, we were actually able to make these all from scratch and conform to the bug's small footprint layout. Make 
make some panels today and just the last couple of other wooden things that need to be made before we get to paint. So we're gonna get all that made up, hopefully get the panels put in, get everything sanded, and if there's a miracle, we'll get a coat of paint on those today as well. Two and a half days later, and we're just about ready to get a first coat of paint on everything that's left to go in. I'm gonna set you guys up in here and get a, a reaction of him seeing it for the first time as soon as he gets here. So here we go. And I'm just gonna let you go ahead and go in there, man. All right. Now. It's sick. Look at it for the first time. Oh, dude. What? Drew. I hope you liked it. This is insane, dude. <laughs> what? This is the same bug? So we ended up keeping the same vintage clasps on the outside here to lock the rooftop tent down. But once you get into the backside here is where everything's changed. If you remember from before when I had this bug, I would have to fumble around with putting the top up. Well, that's no more because I have an electronic lift. We installed a new giant lithium battery here from Dakota Lithium. And now with the ease of the press of a button, the top goes up. Gone are the days where I'm fumbling with springs and clasps to get the, uh, the bug put up. We ended up using standing desk actuators for the bugs. We have two main support beams inside of here. These things have the support weight for up to 550 pounds with these two legs. And I know the roof definitely does not weigh that. Now you might notice that it looks a lot warmer in here and it not only looks a lot warmer, but it actually is a lot warmer in here due to the new fabric we decided to use on the inside. We also replaced the old hand pump sink with one that's electronic. So now I have water with just the flip of a switch. The fabric we decided to use was some nice, thick, silky fleece type material. Um, this is going to provide some insulation, and then, of course, on the outside, we still have the original tarp that I had built for it, which is going to wick away moisture, but this inside liner is colorful and also removable and will make winter camping a lot better in here because it'll retain the heat versus the old canvas just leaking air through here and just ultimately being cold. We did have to keep the door the same height because there isn't another way of access. But I don't mind just bending over. I'm kind of used to it with this bug. It's kind of brought me through the ringer. We did end up installing a nice new wooden countertop. My neighbor actually is a woodworker and he had some of this nice walnut um, available in his shop. And it is nice and shiny right now. I'm gonna do my best to keep it that way, but I really think the warm color of the wood kind of ties in very nicely with all of the orange that's going on in here. Because there wasn't a way to heat in the inside of here, we actually did end up upgrading the system. And now I have a full blown diesel heater inside the bug. 
can access it right here and you're able to power it on. We've got ventilation and then inside of here is actually where the heater lives and we added some fabric in here and some fun holes to add some decoration but also ultimately provide ventilation for the system. So now if I decide to take this thing winter camping, which I'm definitely going to, uh, I'm able to stay warm. This is one of my favorite vehicles to drive around just because of the amount of attention that it attracts. Uh, people love playing slug bug and I definitely see many people getting a kick out of one that has a camper shell on the back. It's part of its charm. And to add to the charm, we actually installed a fully working lava lamp screwed down to the base. It's heating up right now, but this thing is fully operational and I definitely think it adds to the flare along with the uh, fake flower that comes standard in all Volkswagens. We also did end up installing a new max fan inside of here, so no more excuses for bad ventilation. And one of my favorite features that's just gonna add to some quality of life is this. A nice pull-out desk that you can eat on, work on, and whatever. Before I dive right in, I better not forget to put my soft-boiled egg on there. No ramen is complete without a soft boiled egg. And look at the interior on that. It's almost as nice as the bugs. Before when I'd sit down to eat in here, often I was eating on the bed or trying to kind of sit here and hunch over there. But now we have nice bench seating and a big foam pad and a desk that pulls right up next to us. This is gonna make camping trips so much nicer. Also, if I do say so myself, I think the roof tapestry turned out awesome. We added these little buttons in here for a little bit of separation and support, um, some recessed inside lighting, and then the entirety of the edging is all topped off with some nice LED stripping that adds some nice accent and ambient light. We ended up keeping the same mattress, got some new comforters and pillows to match the color aesthetic, but this thing through and through is everything that this bug should be. Groovy, baby. You know, as pretty as the work is, it has to be functional as well. And the only way to test that is to bring it out on the road and go camping. Looks like it's a full tank. So this is my 2004 Volkswagen Beetle. I've owned it for the last three years and although I've done a little bit of work to it, what we did do it in the last couple months has definitely been groundbreaking and gonna make it a lot more comfortable to camp in. Right now it's about 6.30 p.m. here in Minnesota and I've got a two hour road trip before I reach my destination. But like I said, I'm gonna be spending the next two days camping along the northern tributaries and doing some fly fishing and just enjoying the spring weather because spring has finally sprung here in Minnesota. Although it's super beautiful out right now, we might be greeted with some rain, which is 
just judging off of how Minnesota Springs usually go, um, that's not out of the cards. This is one of my favorite times of year to go exploring up the shore because there's so much opportunity to catch big fish and it just feels awesome being able to escape the, uh, the winter months that we endured. I think my favorite thing about this vehicle is just how much of a head turner it is. Uh, it's been a couple months at least since I've driven it and uh, <laughs> the amount of people that are just breaking their necks driving by looking at this thing and smiling makes me so happy. All right, so right now I'm on the Voyager Highway or Scenic Highway 61. It follows the northern shoreline of the beautiful Lake Superior and it goes all the way up into Canada. I'm about halfway done with my drive so far and it's already starting to get dark, so I feel like I'm gonna get there a little bit later than I expected. Uh, that's all right though, because I think my uh, favorite pizza joint in all of Minnesota is still gonna be open. Cozy night camping in town and a fresh pizza Sounds like just what the doctor ordered for tonight. Oh no! My favorite pizza place is shut down right now. Well, looks like we are, uh, going to be chefing tonight then. That's fine. One of my favorite camping spots on the North Shore is up here because it has a uh, public restroom in the parking lot. But by the looks of it, they might have torn the whole building down. That's the stuff right there. Well, a little bit of an angle here. Might have to find a better, better spot, but not gonna find a better spot for a view. The only other thing that has me worried is this sign right here. May or may not roll the dice. Probably gonna get that knock though. Man, this lake's so cool. So I've talked about it at length on this channel, but this is Lake Superior. And uh, it's one of the largest freshwater lakes. Largest by surface area in the uh, Northern America region. Not the most water volume. I think that falls to a uh, great slave lake in the Northern Territories, but this place is beautiful. Just caught the sunset too, just in time. And I also caught that I left my headlights on. Better go shut those off. Mm. Oh, you are barking at me. Although I'm disappointed that the uh, pizza place is closed, I do have a couple recipes that they're excited to cook and have groceries for, so it's probably for the best. Got some fresh, fresh mozzarella, some basil, tomato, and then I have some naan bread. So I was thinking about making like little, little naan calzones with margarita vibe. The other 
thing I'm gonna do. Did make some naan bread from scratch, some naan dough. I'll load this sucker up. Some sliced mozzarella. And of course, some Brazil basil. I'm going to need to use all of this to cover this thing. Now, ideally, I think I'd be putting this into an oven, but I don't have one of those in here, so we're going to try our best. so hungry I'm just gonna start diving into this too because can't let these tomatoes go to waste and I also got some mac and cheese I don't know if this thing's gonna work. Crossing my fingers. Mac and cheese is done. Little squigglies. Mm. Oh, that's hot. That is very hot. I got a feeling it's still going to be doughy on the inside, but... Ooh-wee! Yes, sir. Doesn't look bad at all. Little, little doughy in there, but not terrible, given the circumstances. We got ourselves a non-calzone and some... Swirly mac and cheese for dinner. Dunk that bad boy in some marinara. And there you have a walking margarita pizza. Woo! I forgot that I don't need to walk. Looks like our first new desk. My gosh, this is so good. All right, I'm happy that Spaninoli's was closed. Oh my gosh, it's hitting at like a freaking nine out of 10 right now. It's so good. Okay, I'm pretty tuckered out, so I'm gonna head to bed. Early morning of fishing tomorrow, so. Gotta make sun with the hay shines or something like that. All right, good night, bug. Good morning.
I need coffee and maybe a little brekkie. It's a beautiful morning out here, probably about, I don't know, shoot, it's probably 55 degrees, no wind. It's gonna be a great day to do some fishing. So right now I'm in the northern Minnesota town of Grand Marais. It's actually the last turning point before you go up the Gunflint Trail towards the uh, towards the boundary waters, which we might do in the next couple weeks. Today I'm stopping at the Blue Water Cafe. Get myself some breakfast. What is that name? I don't think it's not new yet. Anywhere you like. Sounds good. Some coffee or something, sir? Coffee would be awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right, starting off the morning with a Swedish pancake, some lingonberry sauce, and a couple eggs and bacon. Good fuel for fishing. All right, got a delicious breakfast. Now it's time to get myself out to the river, see what the little buggy can handle on the road now that we've got some suspension replaced. Not only did the interior get redone, but we also got brand new control arms put on here. Well, you might be able to tell. But I had to get a new radiator also, because we, we had a big old lake. As with anything with the motor, if it gets neglected, it gets issues, and the bug is no exception. I was actually surprised with Oh, I gotta let that cool up, forget it's diesel. But as I was saying, I'm actually pretty surprised with how long it lasted without needing much for repair because uh, I bought it with just under 300,000 miles on it for three grand and it still has the original motor in it. So it's pretty miraculous. The engine's cold, so I'm gonna let it uh warm up for a little bit here then i'm driving about 20 minutes north to go to one of my favorite rivers in minnesota trying to catch a steelhead All right, so here we are at the first river, the Minnesota Brule. Now we're ready to fish. Went ahead and rigged up my rod. Got a uh, bead set up on here. Should be good for this time of year for fishing. And we're heading out on the river. Thank you. I'm gonna need it with the way the water's going. And here's the uh, status of the river. It's flowing really fast. Looks like I'm not the only person crazy enough to fish here, though. This water's moving quick. I've got a larger bead size on today, so I'm hoping that the fish will be able to see that easier, and it could lead to us getting a bite. Because there's people around, I'm going to start off further upriver, so we're going to walk the trail for a little bit here and find ourselves a fishing hole. The name of the game at this spot is gonna be to find myself safe access down to the water. You can see there's a, quite a slope to get down there. I think this is probably my safest spot to get down if I wanna fish this river. So 
So today, I'm out here fishing for steelhead. Well, we call them steelhead up here in Minnesota. Uh, technically, by technicality, they're not steelhead. They're just giant rainbow trout. Um, I know a lot of people out west battle with us Great Lakes fishermen because a steelhead technically has to be able to go into brackish water. They live their lives in salt water and then go up to the rivers to spawn and die in fresh water. Um, and because Lake Superior is a large freshwater lake, these are uh, by technicality not steelhead. But we still call them steelhead up here. They're giant rainbow trout. I've caught them in a few videos in the past, but uh, never caught never caught a big sized one on a fly rod. Unfortunately for me, I made the trek down here, but the river's moving kind of fast. This hole's all right. But as you can see down this way, there's not a whole lot of fishable area and it's not really something that I'm willing to cross because it's dangerous alone. So I'm gonna fish for a little bit longer at this spot, but we might work our way further down river or find a different tributary. Alrighty, I think I've had my fun down here. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking about fishing this area, but even if I hook a fish in there, I have no idea how I'm gonna land it. Oh my gosh. This is gonna be rough. Well, that's pretty cool. Big giant submarine. These guys are testing what the water flow rate is of the river. I'm gonna have to move so they don't <laughs> drop that big heavy thing on my head. You guys measuring the flow? Yep. Nice, what do you got? 725 cubic feet per second. Oh, it's moving pretty quick then. Yeah. Feels like it when you're fishing too. Yeah. The average velocity of 3.3 feet per second. 3.3 feet per second. How are you doing? Good, how are you? You need car or are you <laughs> catching any fish? <laughs> no fish yet, but hopefully here. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. Take care. Have a good day. You too. All right, we've made it to our third spot of the day. One of my favorite rivers up here. Oh, she's quick still. Looks are kind of deceiving. It's moving fast. Got too much friggin' line out. Holy crank, we got trees. We got backpacks, we got water bottles. There we go, another good drift, come on. It's moving so dang quick. We got ourselves a tree fish. Oh, it's a trophy. Look at that, right in the side of the, right in the side of the bark. It's good size, nice and mature. Releasing the grease. What the heck? This is what 90% of fly fishing is, in case you don't fish and you don't out. It is a test of your will and patience. All right, I did in fact get all retied up, but I think it's time for some lunch. I made myself some onigiri the other day, but I made a lot extra because I froze some and I learned in Japan 
that you want to wrap the seaweed. Oh, I was going to say you want to wrap the seaweed separately so it doesn't get wet, but somehow it looks like it's got wet anyway. So, but I made salmon, salmon onigiri. All right. The nori's not soaked, but it's definitely not dry. Oh. Mm hmm. Well, there's still a little crunch to it. I made this with coho salmon that I caught in Lake Superior just a couple weeks ago. Raided my freezer and cooked up about two pounds of it. Made myself about nine rice balls. This is one of the biggest things that I miss about Japan is being able to just go to any gas station and pick them up because they're so good. Well, the rain's starting to come down. It's a light drizzle. I have a sweatshirt on, so I'm gonna go until I'm a little bit uncomfortable and then I'm gonna head back to the car and try to dry myself out. Don't break the rod. All right, spot number four. It's getting a little colder out. Had to throw the jacket on. All right. Well, as I was driving to my next fishing spot, the rain's starting to come down harder, and it's a little bit later than I thought it was gonna be. So instead, we're just gonna find ourselves a nice place to camp for the night. Nice spot. Before I get started uh, getting camp set up, I gotta get a fire going because unfortunately for me, even though it's raining, I have a meal that, I mean, it would be nice if a fire was going. Definitely don't need it, but it would be very nice. found some dry birch wood for sale and that should light up even in the rain. All right, well that's getting burnt down. I am going to set the bug back up. First things first, just like old times, I've seen me do this time and time again, I've kept the same safety latches. biggest thing and my favorite part about the new bug camper setup is the electronic lift that we used so if I hit one here it's gonna fully extend the topper without having to push it up like I used to have to not only is it automatic but it's a little less sketchy than it used to be if you remember the roof used to shake a little bit, and now when I push on it, it doesn't shake at all. All right, this is the place. I got to see a little sneak peek of it last night, but didn't get to give you a run through. So a lot has changed inside of here but the functionality is pretty much the same. So I showed you the new electric system that we have. Um, it's actually provided by 
uh, standing desk actuators. So there's two of them in here and there's a new two by four support for the roof, helping brace it. And those are enough to power the weight of the roof and make it go up and down. Last night was my first night camping in it with the new actuators and man, it is so nice to not have to fumble with all the sides. If you remember from previous videos, I'd have to do a lap around the vehicle uh, just to pop it up on my own and then taking it down was always a nightmare. But now I have uh, full confidence that I can get it up and down on my own and that it's not going to tip over and I'm going to lose a roof. We also went ahead and added a diesel heater. So all the controls for that are right here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn that on right now. Um, I tried to turn it on last night, but I just don't think the system was primed slash I might not have had enough diesel because it actually runs off of the diesel tank that the car runs off of. We did drill a hole high enough, so I should still have a quarter tank of gas. Uh, if I need to drive away, it'll shut itself off or run out of gas before the gas tank does. But let's see, yeah. Everything's powered by this here Dakota Lithium. It's their new power pack. Uh, pretty sweet, because I can hook solar panels up to it. I got a portable one, and then I also have shore power uh, accessible to the outside of the vehicle right now, which is what's going on. I'm plugged in and charging at all times. The diesel heater is located back here. Um, there's some fabric back here for some ventilation. And then that is also where the tank is for my water. So I just have a hand pump sink here. Now I got this custom cutting board, sink cover, and fully operational sink, which is great. Being able to wash dishes off while uh, the food is still not soldered to the pan is huge. We redid the countertops, obviously. Uh, my neighbor at my pole barn actually helped supply the counter surfaces here. It's a beautiful, I think it's a walnut, but it is, it's gorgeous. And it's probably been top coated like four or five times because it is very glossy and pretty. New cabinetry, a couple big deep drawers for all the food stuff. We added a nice bench seat where there was a bench before, but now it has padding and this cool uh, orange fabric. We actually ended up using the orange fabric all throughout to help insulate. This is all just fastened by snaps here. So in the summer months, if I'm taking it out a lot, I can uh, take this down. So it's actually a little bit cooler in here, but you still have access to your window here. So you can get some ventilation right there as well. My favorite new feature has to be a portable table slash desk, because now I actually have a place to sit down and eat when my meal's done. Drew did a really awesome job with doing some curved paneling in here. Did a nice curved panel here for the bench. Did some under storage. Right now I got a stove and stuff in there. And then got a little storage like this for jackets and whatnot. We ended up installing a new max fan up here as well for some ventilation in the summer. Um, so this thing is equipped not only to winter camp, but to also be comfortable in the summer. Of course, you can't forget the ceiling. We ended up going with this crazy tapestry on top. Um, it's got foam backing, so it's soft to the touch. And I really like how it came out with the colors. Kind of goes with the Volkswagen vibe. And then Drew surprised me with a nice little touch here too, a fully functional slash can't freeze lava lamp. Um, it's glass. The one downfall having this is that if it freezes, it will become a grenade. So might end up replacing it with like an LED one. Um, not sure, but sure looks cool. That's enough yapping. I'm hungry, so I gotta get cooking because fishing took it out of me today or walking. On the menu tonight, you might be wondering, what is it? What could you be making? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm making meatball subs brother and I love onions so I'm definitely gonna be putting some onion in there you know what 
I should have brought more mozzarella. Mozzarella is the goat. The goat of melted cheese. A little dirty pan never killed anybody, right? Also, I'm pretty sure recently, I've heard for my entire life that the shiny side of tinfoil is supposed to help bake things better. I saw a YouTube short the other day, somebody that put it to the test for real, like for science. It's not true. Mine is blown. Here comes the greasy part. Here comes a whole lot of grease. This is gonna be a freaking mess. Now to the outside world. That should work out great. Got nestled in some coals. It's not on fire anymore. It'll be perfect. I don't even know how long to give it, like 10 minutes? 10 minutes. I just turned around for a second and it already started back on fire. That's I also have no plan of getting this out of here. Do I look like a guy that thinks that far ahead? I better go grab my sandwich. So otherwise that thing gonna burn. Where are we living? What's it looking like in there? Oh, oh boy. Okay, I cannot wait anymore, so open this thing up and see what we got working with. Show me what you're working with. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. It is amazing that I don't weigh 300 pounds. The cheese like burnt to the bottom. Oh my gosh. It looks delicious. It's a hot mess. Hot mess sandwich. Without further ado, I guess let's just dive in. Not sure if my meatballs got quite done, but I hope so. They look a little pink on the inside yet. What do you think? That's kind of scary, huh? I mean, it doesn't feel raw, but we're just going to eat and pray. But it is delicious. I haven't had a meatball sub in probably a couple of years. This thing is busting. I did take the meatballs off like a little bit early because I was going to... I mean, I thought they were going to cook up a little bit in the fire, but I didn't take them off that early. They were cooking for like 20 minutes. I brought myself a Caesar salad. 
Caesar salad is good plus one. Gently turn meatballs over and bake an additional 13 to 17 minutes until internal temperature reaches at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit and then no longer pink. Uh, well, they're definitely pink, so there's that. It was delicious. I am stuffed. I'm thinking it would really suck to have PTSD of meatballs, you know? There's been a lot of meatballs made on this on this channel, actually. Like, remember that one time I made meatballs in Sweden? And uh, they fell on the floor of the hotel. Oh my gosh, dude. That was my friggin'. Oh my god, bro. Are you friggin' kidding me? Oh. Terrible. Those meatballs are so good, though. Oh my god. Meatball sub, um, it would have been at like a, I think it would have been at like a 9-2. But uh, given the circumstances of the unforeseen meat, kind of knocked it down to like a, a 7. Um, it tasted really good. The only thing it was is that after I found out the meat was pink on the inside, just I couldn't get it out of my brain. So We're going to go with a 7.2. Uh, last night's dinner. A little bit better and safer. Oh. Yeah, boy. This thing is competing for my favorite vehicle. It might be my favorite one now. This is so awesome. It's tough to beat Steve, but Steve's... Steve's having his own set of problems right now. Not that any of my vehicles haven't been, but... I'm really surprised at this point. You have old stuff. Chances are you're going to have to fix stuff on it. Okay, um, I just did some quick Googling. Apparently meatballs can still be pink in the middle and be cooked all the way through. Uh, I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope they're hot enough inside because I didn't have a thermometer. So that helps my troubled brain a little bit. Glad I didn't eat the rest of them, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Am I happy or disappointed? N neither. It was a good sandwich. slipped kind of like a rock. I slept like a rock that woke up three times. That's pretty normal for me when I'm on the road though. Um, there's a lot of road noise behind me and I think that was it. It was road noise and my back is still a back. It's sore. Alright. It is crazy how beautiful this lake is right now. And it's relatively warm outside. I need coffee bad. You know, although I'm severely disappointed that I didn't catch a fish yesterday, I can't really say that I'm that surprised i mean it has been about four seasons of me doing that without getting one on the fly rod here in the north shore caught him on the south shore in a river can't do it here for some reason i'll chalk that up to going at the wrong times of year or just not really knowing what the heck is going on also i may or may not have eaten an undercooked meatball sub yesterday and i'm still here to tell the tale so that's a good good standing Bam. All right, well, I think the fish are gonna have to wait for me for another day. Very happy that I got to take Bugless on his first maiden voyage with his new build. My next rule of action is to 
to work out the rear suspension. Maybe put some airbags in and figure out a road trip that I want to do in it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, until next time, you already know the drill. Just keep on trucking.